Once we have our back for app application and our Facebook application, it's time to make them both talk to each other. In order to do so, we have to go to your back for app dashboard, click server settings, scroll down all the way to Facebook login, click settings, and here you should add your Facebook app ID. If you go back to your Facebook developer account, copy your app ID, paste it here, click the plus sign, and when the green message shows up, you're good to go. If you come here to your Facebook developer page and open your Facebook login and quick start, open up your web because this is a web application and click continue. Facebook will give you some source code in order to make your Facebook app work. This, we're going to use this, but there are a few things we have to change. So I'll just copy the source code. If I go to my public folder and open my index.html file, Facebook tells us we should put this after the opening of the body tag. So here's the opening of my body tag. I'm going to paste it here. And I'm also going to reindent it so it looks a little better. And what we have to change here is see this Facebook.init? We have to change it to parse to use it. So we're going to change the Facebook.init to parse.facebookutils.init. Also, we have to get our app ID and paste it here and our SDK. We're using the latest version, 3.1, so v3.1, we paste it here, and we should be good to go with Facebook login. But this is the Facebook part of the thing. We also have to set up the parse SDK. In order to do that, I'm going to paste another script tag with the parse SDK URL. You can get this URL from the Back for Apple website, and this is actually, actually a link that will give you the latest version of the SDK. And then we have to initialize parse. In order to do so, I'll just paste some code here and tell you what to do. Sorry, wasn't here, it should be here inside the script tag and reindent it since it's good enough there you go uh, the initialize method uses your app id and your javascript key which you get from the back for app website in your dashboard core settings this is my app id and my javascript key and the server url that we use for back for app is parseapi.backforapp.com but this is uh, vendor attached so if you use the other parse server, you should change your server URL accordingly. I have to add a button to our page. So when we click that button, uh, the Facebook login happens. So I have some code here. It's just regular plain HTML code that will draw a button. Sorry. 
and all it does uh, is put a Facebook login with a Facebook button that have has a on click event that calls a function that shall be called login. So if I just save this and go back to our console, I have to publish all this code back to back for app. So before a deploy. All the source files will be uploaded to back for app. And once it's done, if I go back to Google Chrome and reload my page, here you have the login with Facebook button, but it doesn't do anything at this point because I don't have that login method coded. Uh, I'm going to code it now. It's just a big bunch of code, so I'll just paste it and go line by line telling you what, what it does. So. If I go back all the way to my script tag, I can paste my function, my login function. And what this does is, when this function is called, it will use the Facebook utils from parse and the login method to get the information and the permissions we need uh, in a comma separated uh, string. So in this case, I'm telling I want the public profile of the user and the email. Those are the informations I need to my app. Your app may need different information. You just put a comma and ask Facebook for the authorization uh, the user has to agree with, and then you, you can have access to it. And the way most of this works is with blocks. So we have a success block here, and an error block here. If everything goes well and I can retrieve my data, the success block will be called. But if I have any problem, then the error block will be called. The um, success block uh, will be called when uh, the user first uh, authorizes the application. And the first thing I have to do is check if that user exists in my database in back for app because at some point we will try to increment the user score for that specific user, so is user specific information. So I have to know if that user already exists in my database and I have to increment that score or if it does not exist, I have to create a new register. So I'm negating here if the user does not exist, then I use Facebook API to get the user ID, name, email, and permissions. And with that information that will come in a response object, I will try to parse for the response name, which is the username, and the response email, which is the user email. And I'm going to set it to an object called user. And uh, with the within the uh, properties called username for the username and email for the email. Once this object is set in memory, I will try to save it. And once again, I will work with a success and error blocks. So when I try to save the object, if I, everything goes well and the object is saved in back for that database, uh, I'll just print this message, which includes the username and the email for that user. If something goes wrong, I'll get into the error block, which will uh, print this message. And as you can see here, I have the error.message, which is a very high level um, definition of what went wrong. So I can try to, to understand better the kind of problem that I had. So it seems good to me. Something that you should really take care when you, you're coding like this is checking if uh, the the uh, brackets here are correct because if you put it like this it might not work all right uh, I ran into this problem also you should check your 
app ID and version to make sure everything is right because if something goes wrong in this part you probably have some issues later so I'm going to save all this and once again I have to publish those that code back to back for app so just do a B for A deploy everything will be pushed to back for app servers and once it's done I can go back to my Google Chrome and reload my game I'm going to open my console so we can check for any error messages we might have and when I click login with Facebook stop in the, in the debugger so just let it go it will ask for my authorization I'm already logged in so I can authorize if I go back to my console as you can see I was able to log in with my user and my email so if I go back to my apps and now since we're checking data I should go to my app dashboard you can see I have a user class that wasn't here before it was created automatically as I told the application to save that uh, user and here I have some authentication data and my username and date created and email and pass password of course is hidden I can add new columns if I want to there are many ways to add columns I could do it by code I could uh, add it by, uh, by clicking this button but we'll get that late to that later at this point what is important is you have Facebook login working so your um, able to to record user specific information within new classes that you might write later all right